Revenues for the fourth quarter for BioNano in 2020 were 4 million, exactly as we actually calculated literally in two videos ago. An increase of 43, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we don't care about this. This is cool though. The revenue increased, gross margin decreased because of primarily uh, this. Okay, you can read this and I'll link this. I'll link everything for you. Yeah, right. You're welcome. I'm working a thousand hour operating expenses. They increased a little bit, uh, mostly because of salary expense. Okay, headcount increased by 49, right? Um, and they aligned into the line of gen acquisition. Okay, that's a lot of money right there. That's a lot of money right there. And also those that is kind of included, right? So that's a lot of money. That's why their operating expenses are so high. But of course, the revenue is increasing. And guess what? They don't have to pay for Linogen uh, every every year. They get revenue from Linogen every year now because it's not even Linogen anymore. It's BioNano, right? They acquired them. So um, you can read all this if you want. All right. Also, real quickly, we'll go over the recent corporate highlights. Um, okay. So, so since the start of 2021, uh, they raised $335 million from the offerings. That is obviously amazing. That's like a, that's way more than their revenue, right? It's way more. The revenue is only $4 million, right? Uh, for the fourth quarter, they've already ra raised this much uh, from offerings. They also have, the, obviously, they have the Linogen acquisition. Also, they have Christopher Stewart and this doctor here. Um, that Those are two highly credentialed uh, leadership members that you can actually go watch the, the last video on BioNano previous to this one. Uh, and I will ha I have the Reddit due diligence link, including all of the credentials of each of these leadership members and more. The CEO notable paraphrases and quotes, in my opinion, of course. Now, this is mostly, this is all from the webcast that we just had. I hope you watched some of it. If you didn't, you don't need to, because I'm going to sum up most of it, if not all of it for you here. And if you think there's something I left out here, go leave it in the comments and I will pin your comment uh, and, and like it and heart it and everything and, and reply, okay? So, Firstly, the innovation of these companies, when the CEO was asked about, I don't remember exactly what he was asked about, but this is what he said in response to some question that is important. I'll elaborate on that so it makes sense. The innovation of these companies, as far as the sequencing, long rate sequencing companies and the competition is leveling off. Their innovation is leveling off. It's getting lower. There's not any innovation left to be found, right? It will be virtually non-existent soon. That's not a direct quote. Remember, these are paraphrases basically. Okay, so BioNano is in an untapped market and their innovation level and potential is a thousand times higher than their so-called competition. I would call them indirect competition right now in regards to these stocks right here, these companies right here, uh, especially CRSP and PacBio, right? A lot of people consider them their competition. Not really. I mean, yeah, they're the closest thing to competition, but they're not actual competition. It's not like uh, it's not like Walmart and Target or, or uh, McDonald's and Wendy's, right? If that makes sense. So 2 million samples. This was when he was being asked about the total addressable market for BioNano. 2 million samples are being processed each year. Uh, BioNano is going to be getting more into the cytogenetics space. That is that is a branch of bi biology dealing with uh, more chromosome uh, information. Now, I don't know. Obviously, I'm not a genetics expert. Okay, I can be wrong on this. Okay, I don't I barely know what that's the basic definition. Okay, um, but the total addressable market for all genetic labs for but this is the total addressable market in, in a way this is in a sense the total addressable market for for bionano all of all genetic labs if bionano were to actually do what we think they're going to do and basically uh gain and cultivate uh total mainstream adoption like almost 100 percent of all genetic labs will be using their technology because it is just too good not to there's too many benefits of it we will be going over more on why there's actually the best soon but that market that I was just talking about, three to three and a half billion dollars worth of a market. Now that's more than double their current market cap. So that would be a doubling if, you know, let's say they do this, I don't know, let's say they do this in five years or two years or one year or a couple months. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take them to, to get their product out there and start getting mainstream adoption, right? Uh, as far as genetic labs, I don't know. But what I do know is that when they do, it's going to result in this much revenue coming in. That's how much of a market they can start accessing and addressing. So next up, think when joint genome analysis is performed on all newborns. I think this was a direct quote from the, from uh, Eric Holman, the CEO of BioNano in the webcast. Uh, but this is really important. And I don't mean, you know, uh, I don't mean, hey, 
hey, uh, mom, do you want to change your kid's eye color? We can do that with optical genome mapping with, with BioNanos technology, right? I don't mean that. You know, that's, I don't know, that's okay. I, I, don't, I don't really care about that. What I care about is the health problems. Like, okay, this baby is maybe going to die if we don't get some optical genome mapping research tests done, and then we can figure out what the problem is, and then we can do, we can do a solution. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a freaking doctor. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, right? Uh, but optical genome mapping can certainly have some critical health uh, um, research and, and advancements as far as newborn health. That's for sure. And then obviously uh, this is a quote from the, the CEO. From, so take it from him. And and obviously what this is alluding to is just think about that. Uh, think about how crazy that is going to be and think about how much that is going to result in stock price to go up because of more revenue. Because obviously if it's going to be, if genome analysis is going to be performed on all newborns, BioNano is going to get way more revenue because it's going to be more sales, more sapphires installed. Right. So Next generation sequencing, uh, next generation sequencing, long read sequencing, all this other crap that they're doing, right? All the bad stuff, right? Bio nano is the good stuff. The the optical genome mapping, that's what we want. So that's the distinction. That's the distinction between the two. If you're confused a little bit, um, next generation sequencing slash long read sequencing is obsolete due to the increased cost, time, and limited detection uh, compared to bio nano. That's the CEO's own words. That's a paraphrase or an exact quote. These are all close to exact quotes from the CEO uh, like an hour ago uh, in the webcast. Sapphire is the number one option for structural variation. This can be used for drug development for cancer. Many advancements yet to be found. No one else, no one has been talking about this really. I don't find many people talking about this. The total addressable market is even higher than this. Because there's just, with genome analysis, the potential, the potential is, this is the potential. You're going to hear it first. Now, this is a couple of decades away, probably, or at least a couple of years away, probably decades, maybe centuries away. But eventually, assuming uh, mankind goes on for the next couple of centuries or decades, at least, genome analysis and, and optical genome mapping, or at least some form of genetic testing and, and research, will basically have the capability to cure diseases like that. And all, all diseases eventually, potentially. Maybe, probably, I would say probably, uh, you know, obviously that's not, you know, it, I'm not going to justify all my explain, explanations on that because this video is already going to be long. Okay. But that is the end goal of genetics. And we, and we know there's a chance for that. Okay. You can't tell me there's not a chance for that. If you were to go back a thousand years from now and show uh, people living back at, back then a phone, they would think you're a witch and they would hang you for, for being uh, a Satan worshiper or something. Okay. So what we are going to have a thousand years from now is going to be magic compared to us today. So something like, okay, curing all disease using this little tool right here, that's not going to seem crazy when it actually happens. And BioNanogenomics is one of the few companies in the world that is actually able to actually capitalize off of some of that, maybe not, not on that precisely. They're not actually going to capitalize on curing every single disease in the near, in the near term, right? But long term, if they are around for a little while, they absolutely are set up to capitalize and benefit stock price wise from that. That's why we're investing long term partly. We're at the very beginning of the story. I love I, and I notice I, I these were all in order, but I love the how subsequently these two go together. We're at the very beginning of the story. That's the that's a direct quote. CEO. Okay, let's just put C E O. Okay, there you go. Now, this is actually really crazy because right after this, someone was asking him, someone was kind of uh, lauding him and giving a little bit of a tautology. I think that's, I think that's how you pronounce it, tautology. Uh, giving a little bit of a, of a, a praise and, and a, 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 a question, question, more of a statement of approval on BioNano's uh, progress. And then he, and then they, I don't know what the question was. It was something like, um, I don't know what it was exactly, but they were, they were really bullish. It sounded like they were very bullish on BioNano. And he went on to say, yeah, that's great. Uh, I think we're going to do amazing things too. Not like that exactly, but basically. And then he went on the list. Okay, but there are serious limited barriers of structural variation in what we're doing. And this is very important. Listen to me right now. Those barriers are for real, but he, he knows he's not just, and this tells me that he's not an arrogant CEO or a wishful thinking, crazy level, unrealistic optimism. You know, he's not one of those types of CEOs. He's a CEO who understands there's crazy barriers and there are really serious obstacles that we're going to have to get through. But he also 
thinks that they're at the very beginning of the story. He also thinks the Sapphire is the number one option. He also thinks that next generation sequencing is obsolete, and there's a three to three and a half billion dollar market, double the current market capitalization of bionanogenomics genomics waiting to be secured and taken, waiting for, for for it to be taken, just waiting. Given that he says this and he acknowledges the barriers, this makes me this just verifies that he really is a true believer in what they are doing. And that's basically, that is the number one thing that you can do. Uh, that's the number one thing you can do as far as making other people believe you actually believe what you're saying in the first place. And how do you do that? You do the research and you do the work and you actually find out what the best option is. Then you believe it. Then you persuade other to believe it without even trying to persuade because it's what you believe, if that makes any sense. Anyways, that's what we're looking at. I know this is a long one. All right, this is another cool thing. Okay, this is a huge document right here. Okay, this is an actual full report. Okay, four large clinical studies getting underway. They are getting started, right? Okay, I can't highlight on that. That's annoying. To support penetration of our target markets and support third-party reimbursement. Okay, so uh, constitutional, prenatal, uh, amnio, and CVS. Okay, all this crazy stuff. More of the story here. We're not going to go over all this stuff. Okay, some of this stuff is above my head. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> Um, like this, like what the heck, what the heck is some of this stuff? Okay. What is it on? Okay. I don't even know what some of this stuff is. Okay. Goal. But the point is they're getting there. There, there are four large clinical studies getting underway to support penetration of our target markets. I understand that first part. And I understand, I understand this heading, but I don't, what I don't understand is this. Okay. What I do know is that once these studies get done and they get published, boom, we're going up, we're going up. All right, not necessarily. They have to be good studies and they have to be groundbreaking in some way, obviously, but BioNano knows how to do that. And given the CEO's validations, val given the CEO's articulation, and, and my, my confidence in the CEO is very high uh, and, their, and their, their leadership team is amazing. But this is cool. I'll link this if you want to go more into it. All right, this is just real quick. If you want to see how our earnings uh, projections stacked up and you want to verify my track record and see, okay, does this guy actually know what he's talking about or is this just some retard on YouTube? <laughs> um, no, I'm not like the other retards on YouTube, but there's a, there are a lot of them. I hate a lot of the stock YouTubers. Okay, hey is a strong word. I dislike them strongly. Okay, uh, but our earnings estimate and our revenue was literally, our revenue estimate was was perfect. Okay, we literally said, uh, I literally said there was the, I, I literally said, I'm assuming, and you can go watch the video for proof. I literally said, I'm assuming it's going to be 4 million in revenue due to the lineage and acquisition due to the presentation preliminary estimate for bio and genomics in that present in that conference they were doing, uh, based on, um, based on a couple other things that I have listed down here. That I am forgetting right now. Um, earnings day was not delayed. Big money's not been selling out. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, all that stuff. I, I made that projection, and obviously, we were, we were perfectly right, obviously. Um, and of course, I didn't know for sure, but I said there was a high chance. The high chance came to fruition, and that's what high chances do. They come to fruition more more often than not. Kramer just recommended BNGO during lightning round. Yeah, the link is in here. If you, I'll link this... Uh, I'll link this Reddit and then Reddit Reddit thread and then you can go down here and then actually and actually watch that. It's not that crazy. I watched this like literally ten seconds, but Kramer did say BNGO is a good buy. Uh, and obviously, what did the stock price do? Basically, literally, basically zero because of it. And this is just what I'm saying. We've gotten so many good pieces of news, and the stock just does not react in the last month or two since the downtrend started from the start of the correction, right, February 16th, that dreaded day. Well, that was actually a good day to sell out, but obviously that was the start of the downtrend, right? Um, but uh, yeah, this is bullish. And one of these days, guys, uh, the stock market is device from transfer wealth to the inpatient to the patient. One of these days, the patient will be rewarded. And BioNano, more than a lot of other stocks, in my opinion. Taking a look at their Twitter, uh, this I'll link this as well if you want to watch the webcast. Okay, I think this is how you rewatch it. Um, that's how I, that's how I was watching it live. Um, now, the Harvard Medical School researchers use optical genome mapping with Sapphire to uncover clinically relevant structural variations in genetic disease mis mixed by array and NGS. Today is the last day to register for tomorrow's webinar at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, if you want to, if you want to do this, obviously there you go. But guess what this is? Another catalyst, not priced in. Okay, these guys are legendary with their. They, these guys really want. To, these guys are basically like me and my YouTube channel and my businesses. Okay, they are doing everything they can. They're working literally like a ton of hours, uh, and they are doing everything they can. And none of it's working right now. Okay, <laughs> none of it's working right now for them, um, and uh, they're still working. And guess what? Long term, hard work is going to be rewarded. 
Okay, now this is literally everything you can want. I'll link this as well. If you want this in the other format from Bi from Yahoo, right? You can see a little more on this one. It's a little wider, right? And then you can click on all this. It's a Bionator website. So also, guys, you need to understand this because this was just such a horrible day. Uh, and we are going to go over the technicals here in a second. Um, but the stock market is a, de is a device for transferring money from the inpatient to the patient. This is just so, it's so true. And, and the thing that people don't understand here is that if you do good research, this is 100,000% true. If you do bad research, this is still usually true. Guess what? If you just pick random companies, random penny stocks, random OTC stocks, if you buy them and hold them for years and check it like a couple, I don't know, check it once a month, you will have so many times and so many opportunities in the aggregate, on average, probably, to sell for a gain so you you have so many chances, and preferably if you do your good research and actually hold for a while uh, until they hit your price targets, until you think they're topping out, uh, you're going to be fine long term. And that's why I don't worry. That's why I don't worry about the day to day, right? That's not. That's why I don't worry. Also, I'm up forty two percent right now. <laughs> that doesn't. That helps a little bit too, right? Um, but I'm not worried because I'm not. I'm in it for the long haul. I don't, when it's days like this, when the markets go down and our stocks get disproportionately affected, and yesterday too, yesterday got disproportionately affected in a downward direction too, right? I don't care because I know these are all winners long term. They've already been winners for me, right? At Microvision, I've already hit right only 20, 29%. I averaged up on Microvision, by the way. But I've already, you know, right now this is looking very red, but it's because I've already taken profits. How do you think I got 42% return in the first place, right? Um, but next up, short interest, Fentil.io. Okay, 28%. This is higher than yesterday. Now, I want to be clear because someone actually got confused uh, as to what I was saying here. Okay, short volume ratio. This is not short interest. Short interest is the amount of shorts that I've not covered yet. Um, and this is this short volume ratio. This is how many. This is how many shares have been traded on the twenty third today. This is how many shares of that today were traded in a short way, being one of the two that I'm about to say. Either they were new short positions, or they were um, they are shorts that have not covered yet. Or, or they are shorts that covered. They are shorts that covered or shorts that took up new short positions. Okay. So that's how they actually traded the shares. Okay. Um, so 28% of the shares being traded were traded in a short way. I hope that makes sense. Um, what this means either way, let's just, I always just assume half of these are new short positions or half of these are, are, are people holding their, their short positions. These people are going to have to cover eventually. And right now, probably some of them are covering literally right now as we speak, right? Um, you know, we did get it. Well, they probably, honestly, they probably covered right before, um, because we obviously do see a little bit of green volume coming in right before the after hours. And then, you know, boom, could have sold up here. I actually almost trimmed my position there, but anyway, anyways, guys, um, next up. Okay. Average monthly stock market returns, 1980 to 2018. Uh, we're looking very good right now. We're in March right now. Uh, we have four more months of green coming up. That is good. This is earningswhisper.com. I'm not even, we don't even have anything in here today. I could just have this in here. If you want to see earnings news, BioNano, obviously, this is a good website for you. Uh, US uh, economic calendar. We had Powell today. <laughs> yeah, we had Powell today. Yeah, that was, you know, Powell was doing Powell, what Powell does now tomorrow. Well, that was, this, this was today. Tuesday is actually today. So luckily, we still have a ton of stuff tomorrow. Okay, I thought, wow, they've added, wow, do you guys remember earlier in the, in the last couple of days videos where this was like nothing and now there's like a thousand things on here? That sucks. Well, I was going to say this is good news because there's not that many things here, but we have a thousand things. We have Fed share, Jerome Powell, oh my gosh, testifying again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is not looking very bullish short term for the market, but we will see, guys. We will see long term is better than short term. Uh, 850. If we were to dip all the all the way down, eight, all the way down from 853 to 844 uh, in today's after hours, going to tomorrow's pre market. If we were to dip down, that's your that's a strong entry point. If we were to dip more than that, this 38.2 percent retracement level sitting at roughly 830, 833, 832. That's another level to watch. Um, so those are your levels to watch. Now, personally, I am holding all my shares no matter what, right? Because long term we're good. Short term. Short term, I think we're due for a freaking correction in the upwards direction. Honestly, like I really think, like we we had our little nice, uh, you know, we had our we had our Sauron. This was Sauron's prime in here, and then we bounced up a little bit, and now Sauron is kind of uh, taking over a little bit more, right? We we are downtrending, right? Um, Macrosco microscopically, but uh, for me, I'm holding. Um, we'll see if we are going to be able to jump over this and confirm the break out or break down off of this descending level of resistance. It's looking like we are going to break it down. 
uh, and reject this as a resistance level, come back down for a support level. So let's look at some other indicators, though. There's really not much to go over here today. Okay, guys. The more of the story today is that the markets did horrible. Uh, and really, guys, short term, you know, trade if you want. Trading is fine. I trade all the time. I, I add shares and sell trim positions like most most days. Um, but the markets did horrible today. Our stocks, every stock did horrible. The markets did everything. The markets really, in actuality, right? The markets only went down one percent. They only went went down one percent because of uh, these guys, right? If I can find them, these guys right here. The big boys did okay, and everything else was just. Look at this, eighteen percent MP materials. That's a great company. Eleven percent Microvision, BioNano, IDX. Yeah, I don't like IDX, but. Uh, nine meters, so Medica, everything is getting beat down more than one percent, and the markets obviously don't reflect that because the markets, the markets like to pull our stocks down when the markets go down, but when the markets go up, they just like, eh, man, we don't care. We we're gonna go up our, on our own, but when we go down, we'll take your stocks with you. It's like, uh, it's, it's frustrating when that happens. I'll tell you that. But what am I doing? We're still going over the technicals. Okay, uh, moving averages, we're looking very bullish. Um. Moving average exponent, exponential moving day average. The 200 day exponential moving average is below the 15 and the 55 day moving averages. Uh, we're looking bullish there. Bollinger bands. We are seeing a little bit of resistance from this 906 middle Bollinger band. Um, that's pretty much all. Let's look at the MACD and our side K. We're oversold. We're closer to being oversold now. And the orange MACD line is looking to cross over the signal line for a bullish uh, confirmation. That's a buy signal. Once we get that in the next couple of days, if we get the next couple of days that are green, that will cross. Representing some bullish momentum for the stock, likely to break the downtrend for sure. I would say we already have broken the downtrend here. Um, I would say as long as we are above this descending, let me maximize this for you. As long as we are above this descending uh, level of support here, well, resistance previously, as long as we're above that best trend line, we are still uh, in an uptrend or at least breaking the downtrend from uh, from all time highs up there. Okay, so um, that is that is all I've got for you as far as the technicals, current positions. I did a little bit of trading today. Okay, computers glitching. Okay, the video is too long. This is going to be a heck of an interesting time to edit. Um, I added a little bit to MP because it was just getting so unjustifiably beat down. They had an offering. Oh my gosh, they're down three percent after hours too. This is an amazing buy zone in my opinion. You guys scoop this up in the thirties because this. This is an amazing stock. And also, it's dead inside improved. Okay, so there you go. Dead inside is like almost, you know, he, he's right most of the time. Usually, really almost always, I would say. But uh, this is a great company. I don't like electric vehicles, but this company inevitably is going to benefit because they supply electric vehicles. And electric vehicles, the production is inevitable. The efficiency, not so much in my opinion, but... The supply is going to have to come from somewhere. This is one of the biggest companies uh, as far as cut mining. This is not an MP video, though. This video is going to, this is not even going to get uploaded because it's too long to update, too long to process. Relevant information in regards to how to finish now. This is part of the stuff most YouTube do, blah, blah, blah. You already know why videos have been less frequent now. This is actually important. I'll spend a little bit of time on this. I've been working on this. I've been like working on this stuff. That's why the videos have been less frequent. I want to do more updates, but I literally had just been working like six hours a day on our website. Um, and, uh, and, uh, a ton of stuff. I've been working on a ton of stuff, man. I'm working on the on the entire auspicious kind of business going on. Um, you'll see what I mean. I'll have the website. Hopefully, the website will be ready. Um, hopefully, it'll be it'll be ready by the end of the week. I think it's looking really nice. Uh, I'm gonna have some really nice affiliate links in there. Um, really auspicious products that I'm gonna review, and I do make a commission off them. But they're not. They're gonna be good products, and of course, only buy them if you want. And it's worth it for you. They're gonna be good products if you want to buy them. I make a little bit. I make like a one to five percent commission or something if you take if you buy them from my link. But I, you know, they're good products. You know, I'm not gonna screw you guys over. And of course, don't buy it if you don't like it. If you don't trust me, okay. If you don't trust me, if you don't like the product, don't freaking do it, okay. <laughs> Patreon. Uh, we've already got several members. Check out the Patreon, guys. Seriously, it's very, it's very auspicious in my opinion. We've done some really good stuff. Uh, Discord is ready. Discord, is, Discord's up. Discord is good to go. I post every day on there. I work very hard, and we only have three patrons. I want to be able to provide my services to more than just three people. Um, you know, um, merchandise is also ready on the Patreon. If you want merch, there you go. Reddit, join our Reddit group. I'll link that in the description. Join our Reddit. Uh, I don't think we have any members uh, as far as I checked. I don't think we have any members. We will link. Check the Weeble link for free money. BrandonBalsyout.com. Okay, this is actually okay. Let me actually change this. Okay, this is actually wrong now. Okay, I actually did do have a business email now. Okay, uh, let me tie this with one hand really slowly. Okay. 
Okay, there you go at yahoo.com. Okay, that, that's the new email that you want to email me at, please. Okay, <laughs> I guess you know my other one, so you can just email me there. Either way, uh, I'll try to get back to you. Success is not going to change our business model. We're going to start seeing success exponentially increase, I think. I, I There's... And the work I've been doing, we are guaranteed in my mind to start making, start doing very, very well on the YouTube, on the website, uh, on the Patreon, and, and everything. Okay, when something is important enough, you do it, even if the odds are not in your favor. Remember that quote from Warren Buffett, guys. This is uh, Elon Musk, but remember that other quote from Warren Buffett. I should have put that in here today. Uh, but anyways, guys, this is not financial advice. See you on the next one. Uh -huh.